Hi, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and it is time for our February Kimberbell project. And I have to tell you that it was really fun to make. I was cruising right along with it. I have a, some tips, you know, to give you, but there is a shocking, glaring, horrible mistake that I made this month. Can you guess what it might be? Does this look like the jar that you got in your Kimberbell Society kit? That's right. Yours truly made a mistake. I stitched the correct size legs and the correct side insides with the wrong size jar topper lid. So I had to steal this mason jar from Bonaparte. It's normally where his like wild weenie treats go, but I filled them with cute little lemon drops because I thought that looked like the pot of gold that our little leprechaun is diving for. So. Just so you know, this is a wide mouth jar. These larger mason jars are the wide mouth. The kind that you got in your kit is the regular size. So just be aware of that and don't make the mistake like I did. So let's go through and see what we need to do this month. So we're getting ready for St. Patrick's Day in February this month, everybody. And uh, your supplies, of course, you're going to need your Kimberbell Society kit for February 2024, which you can buy right at BerninaofNaperville.com. You just simply search Kimberbell Society or find it right on our homepage. And you will also see that we offer this as just the kit or the designs and the kit, because some of you want to make more than just one. So you buy two kits from us and you only need the designs in one kit or maybe you have already participated in the digital program somewhere else, but you're looking to buy the kits like we do them here at Bernina of Naperville. So whatever way works for you. Now we gave you enough materials for a wide mouth jar, obviously, because you saw how I made the wide mouth jar. However, we are including a jar in the kit that is regular sized. You're going to get a fat eighth of deep black in pure sol from pure solids and a fat eighth of pineapple from the pure solids. Plus, there's white tulle, there's light gold applique glitter, there's gold embroidery leather, there's camel brown embroidery leather, there's pistachio embroidery felt, black licorice embroidery felt, gold mylar, and of course, our jar, lid, and band. Some other supplies that you're going to want this month is the um, hoop that we're going to use for our regular mouth jar. So I use the Bernina small clamp hoop for everything and everything worked perfectly. And there are six colors of isocord thread in charcoal 4174, in white in 0010, 1876 is our brown color, 5613 is our green and 5730 is the other green and 504 is the yellow. You're going to need a hot glue gun with glue sticks, a cotton swab, and of course some candy, chocolate, pennies, gold coins, whatever you want to fill in your jar. We talked last month about the fact that we've combined all the stabilizers that you're going to need to use for the Kimberbell Society 2024 projects into one bundle. So if you want to purchase that bundle or you have purchased that bundle, you are going to need for this month the fusible backing, light mesh cutaway, wash away, wash away topping, and the paper tape. And of course, there's a link in the handout that I've been going through just now. And this is linked in the description of this YouTube video and in the description of our Kimberbell Society. So this is a PDF that you're going to download and it is interactive. So you can click right through to the links to buy product from us and to see more information if it is relevant. So for instance, how do you get your design? So you just have to note that although you are buying the designs and the kit from Bernina of Naperville, the digital embroidery files, Kimberbell version of the instructions, are emailed to you by Kimberbell Direct. So if you wouldn't mind, when you get your handout, click right here on Watch Here to learn how to retrieve your files. And I will take you through making a username and creating a login and all of those things so you can make sure that you can retrieve your designs from Kimberbell when they're sent to you. And speaking of designs, we are going to be making the regular mouth jar, so we're going to use the following files. The regular pot of gold part C, part A, part B, 
and the You're in Luck tag. And we combine the files, some of the files, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now, so that we stitch the little feet with the cauldron handles and the You're in Luck tag all in one hoop. So let's have a look and see how to do that right now. So I'm here in my Bernina Embroidery Software 9, and I'm going to open a design from my Kimberbell folder. And I just save all of my designs in my Digital Dealer exclusive folder. If you want to see what it looks like on my computer, you can see here I have a shared folder, and there are all the ones from 2023, and here are the ones from 2024. And I save it so I can always know where I can find it, right? So I'm going to go into the embroidery files and I usually just open the art files because I'm working in the software in this application. So I'm going to double click and then I'm only going to open the files that I need for this lesson. So we're going to go with the regular size pot of gold part C, the tag, the pot of gold part A, and the part of gold Part B, and I can just hold down shift and select all of the designs. And then each one of these designs is going to open up in a separate little tab here, and you can see all of them there. So this one I'm not going to do anything with, but I'm going to play around with this one and this one and put them both in the same file. So I'm going to start by just selecting all of my tag here, and I just left click, drag, and lasso this design, and I say copy. Then I'm gonna go over here and say paste. And then I can use my arrows on my keyboard to just move it over out of the way, because this ensures that I have grabbed everything necessary for this design and I'm not breaking it apart and I'm not doing anything like that. But I wanna make sure that I give these designs ample space because you know there's a lot of little leather bits and everything that we're gonna put in here. So I've moved it over quite a bit and then I want to right click on my hoop icon up here and make sure that I select the small clamp hoop just so I can ensure that both of these designs are gonna fit in the hoop. And it looks like I can squeeze it just a little bit closer. I want a little bit of wiggle room in here. There we go. All right, and now this is ready to send to my machine along with my other files. Now there's a couple of ways that I can do this. I have a USB stick inserted into my computer so I can just write to the card or the machine. There's my USB stick and I hit the EXP and now I say okay. And then I do the same thing with this. And then, of course, my other designs, which are right here. So I've, there's really four designs, but I've combined two of them into one file. And when we look at that one file, another thing I want you to do, I was specific about putting the tag in this one because that's going to put the tag stitching out at the bottom so that I'll do my feet and my little cauldron handles first, and then we'll do the tag. Another way that you might wanna do this is if you're working with your sewing machine. And working with your sewing machine in embroidery mode, you would want to take your designs and put them on a USB stick. Now, if I go into my computer and I go to where I save my designs, which is under my shared folder, and it's Kimberbell down here somewhere. You saw me do this earlier. Okay, so we're gonna pick our pot of gold topper. And then if I wanna put these on my USB stick, I can find the kind of files that my machine reads. So in this case, I would double click on the EXP, find the designs that I wanna pick. And once again, we're picking the regular design. So I'm gonna hold down control and click all of the ones that are relevant for the regular. And then I can find my USB stick down here. And it's this little guy here that says USB stick. So I can just left click and drag these four designs right over onto my USB stick. 
Once I have my sewing machine on and ready to go, I'm gonna go into embroidery mode. I'm going to pick my files from my USB stick and there's my Kimberbell February files. So we're gonna start with picking our feet, which is this one. And I, my simulator does not have that small clamp hoop, but don't worry, I'm just gonna use any hoop here. And then what I'm gonna do is add, with this little plus sign button, my tag. And I'm gonna slide that over into position. And if I wanna center both my pieces, I'll select them from my bottom layers there, go into my I button, my move around tool, and center it in the hoop. And now I'm ready to stitch it out. So what are we waiting for? Let's go stitch this thing out. All right, to prepare for a stitching out, we're going to need to take our six threads of our isocord threads, and we're gonna need to wind a bobbin for each. I would recommend only winding them half full, maybe even a quarter full would be okay. And if you're using a Bernina 8 series, do not thread for embroidery. It's fine if you're using the same thread in top and bottom to go ahead and thread it for regular sewing. It'll also help make the back of your piece look as pretty on the back as on the front. And then let's go over to the work table because we're going to be using some of our fusible backing and we're gonna need to hoop up some of our stabilizer. I'm hooping up two layers of water-soluble stabilizer, and this is the water-soluble that's meant to go on the back. And I only have the stabilizer in the hoop because we're going to float the rest of the items. So you're going to stitch color number one out as a placement stitch with the light green in the needle and in the bottom. Then once you have your placement line, you're going to take one of your little felt pieces in that pistachio color and cover that stitching line. And then you're going to stitch color number two. I was a little bit careful on this step. So what I did is after this stitched, I turned my hoop upside down and I covered the other side as you're supposed to do using your stabilizer tape. But then I backed up to stitch color number two again to stitch that felt into place, but you don't really need to do that, but that's what I did. And then I trimmed my top layer really close to the stitching line, and then under the hoop, I trimmed the flannel really close to the stitching line. And then I threaded my darker green up for color number three. And I'm not sure that's exactly the way that was supposed to be done, but that's the way I did it, and things turned out pretty good. Okay, so now to finish the rest of this, you're gonna finish the stripes on the legs, and then you're going to stitch a placement line down to add the leather of the boots. Now, the leather of the boots, are there are two pieces, and it's one for the top of the hoop and one for the bottom of the hoop. And then you're gonna place those both on at the same time using your stabilizer tape to hold it in place. Once they've been held in place, you're going to stitch the rest of the brown, and then there's just another little gold color. Now, part of this design is also those cauldron handles, and they're gonna be stitched on in the same manner. So you're gonna do the placement stitch for the cauldron handles, and then you're gonna put a piece of the black felt on top and a piece of the black felt on the bottom of the hoop, taping them into position and completing the stitches. Once you stitch the cauldron handles, it will complete all of the legs and the cauldron handles. And then it's time to stitch the other design, which we also brought into the hoop, which was that tag. So for the tag, you just do a placement line. Then you stitch your top layer only to the hoop. And I'm using matching thread for this. And I did make a mistake that I'll mention to you later when we get to it, but once you stitch down that tack down stitch, you're gonna just follow all of the stitches with the word. So you do the shamrock, then you do the your, then 
or the you're in, and then you do the look. And after you stitch all the things that are on the tag, then you're going to stop back down. You're going to turn the hoop over. You might want to trim any loose threads or whatever that are back there. And then you're going to place the other piece of the white vinyl onto the back. And if you'll notice, I have some perforation marks on mine. And that's simply because I had stitched them all together, just like those cauldron handles and realized, oh no, I want to cover that little goopy mess under there. So make sure that you take note of this so you don't do like I did, because it was a challenge lining up those little perforations to the stitching. Then once everything is stitched, this, these pieces are done. You're going to cut them out. I use big scissors just to cut through that vinyl. And on my tag, I cut just on the other side of those perforations. So none of us, you know, have to know what really happened there, right? And then you're going to cut out the little legs and the cauldron pieces really close to the felt. And you're going to have to trim those shoes really close to the top of the shoes and, you know, have them so they look like my little pieces there. All right, so now we are going to hoop up just one layer of our water soluble backing and stitch the placement for our yellow square. And don't forget, you're going to put that fusible woven onto the back of your yellow and black squares. So that tack down or that placement stitch was designed for us to know where we're going to put our yellow square. And don't forget to tape it into place so it doesn't shift around on you and go ahead and stitch it down. And you don't even have to trim it at this time, you can just leave it like that, but you do have to trim the little crack, that little crevice that's left in there on the stitch, because that is where we're gonna stick our legs eventually. And one of the things when you're trimming that you wanna make sure that you don't do is accidentally cut the stabilizer. But if you do do that, you can always tape some extra water soluble backing onto the piece underneath. Then your next stitching is gonna be your placement lines for your gold coins. And the first set of gold coins that you're gonna put on are out of the light glitter vinyl. And the Kimberbell glitter vinyl requires that you actually peel a little film off of it. You don't want to use it with that film on. It's just going to simply be too thick. You're going to place that glitter side up, stitch it down, and then trim close to the line once the tack down stitch is complete. And then you have another placement stitch to stitch out, and that one is going to be for the gold vinyl or the gold leather looking stuff. You're going to tape that down, and then you just go through all the motions, ladies and gentlemen, until that layer of coins is added. And so there's going to be the tack down stitch, then we're going to trim really close. And then it's going to be time to place the piece in the top portion of the hoop. So first, like anything else, you trim a placement stitch. And this is where I'm going to give you my public service announcement. So there is netting in our kit. And it's hard to find because this stuff is sheer. In fact, I didn't think mine was in my kit. And then just when I had about given up, it was on the carpet. So I found it. So we're going to layer our mylar gold side up first then we're going to put that layer of netting over this spot here and it's going to tack this down now this stuff is a little tedious once you've done your tack down stitch to to trim so i did that off camera but you're stitching a few single coins and a few clusters of coins and then it's going to, you're going to stitch the rest. And I did all of this in the gold thread in top and bottom. So just be patient with this, tape it into position carefully. And then once everything is done, you're going to take it off the, take the hoop off, liberate everything, and then use your cotton swab that's very, very wet to just rub on the edges of all of these things. And you know what? That was the most tedious process, if you ask me. <laughs> 
All right, so here we are with our mesh cutaway stabilizer, and it's our final hooping. Thank goodness, this has been a lot of hoopings. <laughs> so I'm hooping this up to float our final design, which is the jar topper. And remember, I'm making the large size, but you're going to make the regular size if you're going to use our jar. So you stitch out a placement line, then you stitch that into place. I'm doing the green color just so it shows up here but you could pick whatever you like. This is a decorative stitch, but it's not gonna show. This is gonna be hidden under the rim of your jar lid. And then it's going to do these little placement stitches for our yellow piece that has the gold coins on it. The one that we use the Q-tip on with that slit inside, you know, the one we just made. <laughs> and then once this stitch is down, and remember, we haven't trimmed our piece at all. So we're going to place this square right in those little designs. And that's why we had to kind of use the Q-tip on that first so that we could line this up. And then another thing I want you to be, be mindful of here is that I used a little bit more water than I probably needed. And so I sort of dried my piece using um, my iron very carefully, it was just a little bit damp. And then once you stitch this down, you're gonna trim, I did that off camera, and now we're doing a placement stitch for more felt. So this is gonna be the little felt pieces that you stitched out earlier as well. And these are the placement stitches for these. And this is really, this is tedious. This is more tedious than trimming the netting and the mylar, but once these, these stitch out, you're going to tape the little handles down in place and you are gonna overlap them by just under an eighth of an inch from that placement line. And you're gonna place both of these handles on either side and then you're going to stitch them down. And that one on the left was a little bit too much of a bite. And so I removed it off camera and repositioned it and stitched it again. But you know what, it's up to you. And then finally, this topper, water-soluble topper is in place just so your foot doesn't snag on any of the stuff that we just pre-stitched. So now what we're doing here is we're stitching our cauldron rim piece. And this is where the remainder of the black felt square that hasn't been used yet is gonna go. So we're gonna cover that, tape it down, stitch it into place, and then trim the outside rim and the inside rim. And then there's just a few more placement lines. And just like we did the gold coins on the yellow piece when that was in the hoop, we're going to add placement lines. Then we're going to add some vinyl that's gold, do all of that stuff, and then stitch down the glitter gold. And guess what? We're going to place, tack, and trim <laughs> to finish off our little cauldron. And you just have to be methodical with the instructions. And don't forget, we have our PDF, interactive PDF handout in the description of this video. So if you want to just see our instructions and how we change the Kimberbell stuff just a little bit, the instructions are in that one. But don't fret. If you want to do it straight up the way Kimberbell did it, they include their PDF in your zipped file of designs that you get with with your digital files. Once everything is done, it goes onto the tape drawing board and we just pick out all of the topper with the tweezers. Then we trim really close to the edge. You can see there's our opening where our feet are gonna go. And then I hot glued the feet into our piece. And I use my tweezers to kind of get it into position. And then once you glue the feet down and you get everything just the way you want it, you glue the little gold coins into position. And there's no rhyme or reason as to where you put them. I just kind of put them where I like it. And once that's done, they go in to the lid of the jar and you can potentially glue the, um, the jar lid cover onto the jar lid. And sometimes they're tight enough, depending on the jar, that it's gonna fit in there without gluing anything at all. I did glue mine because I think the wide mouth jars aren't quite as tight as our regular jars. 
And there's one little thing left, and that's to put our Teflon foot, this is our number 52D on my machine here. Always make sure that you use a sew on piece and then a sew off piece because we're just gonna fold that little leather on that tag so that the little stitches there line up like that. And we're just gonna stitch over this final like so and use our cording in our kit to tie it onto the jar. All right, how'd you do? Did you make the correct size? And you know what, it doesn't matter if you wanna make a big size, a small size or whatever, but just plan on if you wanna use the jar that we set you, you're gonna be making the regular size. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you check out our Bernina F. Naperville YouTube channel for more information about the store, tutorials, Bernina feet things, I mean like all kinds of stuff, right? <laughs> and it's easy to do so. You just go to youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and there you can like, comment and subscribe. Happy February.